Welcome Scrum Masters, welcome to Servant Leader Check-In. In this section, you're gonna learn how to self-evaluate yourself as a servant leader. This is the second of two main lectures in this section. Previously, we've talked about mindset and heart set, daily, weekly, and monthly rhythms, facilitation, peaceful communication, and collaborating with managers. So here's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to talk about command leadership versus servant leadership. I'm gonna give you a table that compares the two and then I'll describe a servant leadership self-evaluation. So by the end of this lecture, you will know how to evaluate yourself as a servant leader. All of this work that I'm going to be showing you today, both the table and the self-evaluation, comes from a great paper called A Conceptual Framework for Measuring Servant Leadership by Don Page and Paul Wong. They're at the Trinity Western University in Canada. This is an example of the work that you as an advanced scrum master will be doing. You will be furthering your understanding of being a great scrum master by going out and looking at the primary source information that researchers create. This is very similar to what we've been doing throughout this whole course, starting with section two on mindset and heart set. So all of this information comes from this source. Let's start off by comparing command leadership and servant leadership. Command leadership is on the left side, servant leadership is on the right side. So a command leader has the objective to be served, whereas a servant leader's objective is to serve others. A command leader is interested primarily in the leader's image and advancement. Self-preservation and personal image is at the forefront of most decisions. A servant leader, on the other hand, seeks to enable subordinates to advance to their fullest potential by downplaying self and exalting others. The team or enterprise and all its members are considered and promoted before self. The command leader feels that they're entitled and that they're more important than its responsibilities. The servant leader believes that responsibilities are more important than perks of positional entitlement. The command leader believes that coworkers are treated as inferiors and not usually invited to participate in decision-making or offered important information. For the servant leader, on the other hand, co-workers are treated with respect as part of a team who work together to accomplish a task and make decisions with shared information. A command leader is easily accessible only to their closest lieutenants. The servant leader is often seen interacting with others and maintains an open door atmosphere. The command leader creates an atmosphere of dependence using power or position to influence. A servant leader creates an atmosphere in which others see their potential being encouraged and developed and power is used to serve others. A command leader wants others to first listen to them. A servant leader wants to listen to people before making a decision. A command leader seeks first to be understood rather than to understand. A servant leader seeks first to understand then be understood. A command leader condemns others for making mistakes and reluctantly accepts responsibility and sees it as a sign of weakness. A servant leader values individual workers and learns from mistakes while offering praise to others. A command leader rejects constructive criticism and takes the credit for accomplishment. A servant leader encourages input and feedback and shares credit for the results. Process is as important as accomplishments. A command leader does not train others to function effectively, while a servant leader equips and invests in others with a view to their advancement. A command leader has followers who are based on personality. For a servant leader, a followership is based on character. For a command leader, expediency is the main criteria in making decisions in secret. For a servant leader, principles are the main criteria for making openly arrived at decisions. A command leader uses intimidation to silence critics, and they're defensive in nature. A servant leader welcomes open discussion on improvement and is open to learning from anyone. A command leader wins support for ideas through deception, power plays, or manipulation. People respond out of fear. A servant leader wins support for ideas through logic and persuasion. People respond out of respect and a sense of it being right. Command leaders promote those who follow without questioning or are pliable, yes men. A servant leader promotes those who demonstrate that they contribute to success. 
A command's leader authority is based on external controls in the form of rules, restrictions, and regulations. A servant leader authority is based on influence from within through encouragement, inspiration, motivation, and persuasion. A command leader is accountable only to superiors and shuns personal evaluation as interference. A servant leader is accountable to the entire organization and welcomes personal evaluations as a means to improve performance. A command leader clings to power and position. A servant leader is willing to step aside for someone who is more qualified. A command leader has little interest in developing competent successors, while a servant leader develops others as one of his highest priorities. So that's the difference between command leadership and servant leadership if you have ever wondered what it is or anyone ever asks you to define the difference. Now, how do you evaluate yourself as a servant leader? For each of the statements that follow, and there are approximately 100 statements, you rate yourself from one strongly disagree to seven strongly agree, and then you add up the ratings for each characteristic. We won't go through this in detail. I urge you to do this as part of a homework assignment, but we'll discuss a few of them. Start off with integrity. I am genuine and candid with people. Again, rate yourself from a scale of one, where you disagree, to seven, where you agree. I am willing to be vulnerable, again, from one to seven. I practice what I preach. Humility. I am always prepared to step aside for someone more qualified to do the job. Often I work behind the scene and let others take the credit. I readily confess my limitations and weaknesses. Servanthood. I find enjoyment in serving others in whatever role or capacity they have. I am willing to maintain a servant's heart, even though some people may take advantage of my leadership style. I am willing to make personal sacrifices in serving others. Caring for others. I genuinely care for the welfare of people working with me. I seek first to understand than to be understood. I try to help others without pampering or spoiling them. Empowering others. I am willing to risk mistakes by empowering others to carry the ball. I consistently encourage others to take initiative. I grant all my workers a fair amount of responsibility and latitude in carrying out their tasks. Developing others. I am always looking for hidden talents in my workers. I have great satisfaction in bringing out the best in others. When others make a mistake, I am very forgiving and I help them learn from their mistakes. Visioning. My leadership is based on a strong sense of mission. I have a higher sense of higher calling. My leadership is driven by values that transcend self-interest and material success. Goal setting. I am very focused and disciplined at work. I am able to motivate others to achieve beyond their own expectations in getting a job done. I set clear and realistic goals. Leading, an important part of my job is to inspire others to strive for excellence. I usually come up with solutions accepted by others as helpful and effective. Having widely consulted others and carefully considering all the options, I do not hesitate in making difficult decisions. Modeling, I lead by example. I often demonstrate for others how to make decisions and solve problems. I show my group how to facilitate the process of group success. Team building. I am willing to sacrifice personal benefits to promote group harmony and team success. I evaluate and deploy team members based solely on their performance and capacity for serving others. I encourage cooperation rather than competition through the group. Share decision making. I am willing to share my power and authority with others. I welcome ideas and input from others, including critics and detractors. In exercising leadership, I depend on personal influence and persuasion rather than power. So what's next? Homework. And secondly, think about scheduling your second 25-minute one-on-one session with me, and you can use the information here to contact me. So in this session, you have learned about the differences between command leadership and servant leadership. You have learned how to evaluate yourself as a servant leader. Congratulations and enjoy.